folks. We've been having a good time, and now that we're all purdy and ready to go, we're uh, we're all set. You know, we've been talking a lot about the church today, and I don't want uh, us to misunderstand uh, and think that we're anti-church, which is why we're taking a lot of time with this, because I feel like we have a really important message that takes very clear understanding. And so before you go away from here and say, well, these guys are, are really against church and, and they don't like what's going on, the truth is we're in love with church. We're grieving the, the loss of church, the loss of what true church is all about. And, uh, and that's what I really want to talk about a little more today. Um, I'm going to start with Andreas today. And Andreas has, uh, as we said before in one of our last podcasts, um, his schooling, his whole training is as a deacon. And you're uh, an ordained deacon in the Lutheran Church. Explain how that works and what that means. <laughs> yeah, that's. Uh, it's kind of strange that you can take an education and then that's then you you became deacon because actually the. the one of the biggest compliments I've gotten in my life was uh, uh, people telling me that when I when I was ordained after four years uh, of studying that uh, you were already a deacon. Yeah. Uh, now you just got the title. Uh, that, was, yeah. that was a great compliment. Yes. Uh, but I definitely learned a lot, and also to uh, to get a broader view of uh, the needs of the world and and what is it to be a deacon. So, uh, and it is to uh, to serve people. Uh, some people say the least of these, or just say mm -hmm. my neighbor, because uh, maybe I'm the least of these to other people. <laughs> so we all we all human beings, and uh, we all in need of a savior, uh, and that being Jesus Christ. Uh, so, so church. Uh, uh, do you want to go into the deacon or? What? You know, let's do because I think here's a, a misunderstood part about a deacon. A lot of churches say, well, the deacons and the elders are the ones that run the church, and I don't think they have a real <clears throat> clear understanding of what those two words really mean. And uh, a lot of people say, well, the deacon is the one that kind of takes care of a lot of the spiritual needs of the people and points out when they're doing some things wrong and all of that, but that's really not what deacon is all no. about. Yeah, in, in Acts, it talks about that uh, uh, the apostles suddenly they they had too much to do because they they were they all had all the hats on like a lot of pastors uh, in churches modern churches these days have wearing a lot of hats and I'm sure mm -hmm. uh, Craig and uh, yeah, Scott and Craig you can all talk more about that but <clears throat> where uh, they appointed uh, was it seven deacons mm -hmm. uh, to take care of uh, <coughs> like uh, the elders and uh, the, the widows. The orphans, uh, needs of the church, uh, in that and there were physical needs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah physical needs. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and and that's, if, from my point of view, that's something all of us can do, <laughs> if we have a little bit, a uh, little bit of uh, heart. Uh, and one thing that uh, I want to share is, uh, yesterday, and I woke up in the middle of the night, thinking about that too. And this morning, uh, one of the words has been uh, compassion. For me that I felt that uh, God reminded me about and I've been reflecting this morning on what is the difference between compassion and passion and I think it goes uh, it goes hand in hand on some levels but but what uh, what in the Bible it says uh, it, uh, yeah the, the holy people to have a uh, compassion close yourself in compassion and, uh, and gentleness and and I think if we can if we can uh, focus and get that compassion for people, then uh, then passion will follow. And I see with with church, there's a lot of passionate people for church, uh, but where where where's the focus and what is the passion for? Is the passion to build uh, uh, an empire like uh, Pastor Bob you talked about, uh, mm -hmm. um, or is the passion to actually see the gospel be revealed and uh, mm -hmm. and people's needs getting met on several levels? Uh, and it's the passion to uh, to go, yeah, to to do church like uh, like Christ asks us to do, 
Yeah. You know, it's interesting to me that a lot of people look and they say that's his job, that's his job, that's his job. You know, uh, Pastor, could you go to the hospital and visit this person because it's your job? You know, could you do this because it's your job? People could say, Andreas, could you serve this person because it's your job as a deacon to serve? But part of your job as a deacon is to serve in front of people to encourage them to serve. That really, a deacon is a person who leads other people to serve as well. That's part of your role. And I, I think that... You know, when Jamie talks about the frustration of how the church comes across, I think that's some of our disconnect, is that we're looking for professionals to do all of the work when the professionals are burning out and many times not doing a very good job, and we're not doing anything. If we can go to a quote-unquote church body in a building and sneak in the back and then sneak out again, or kind of take up a little bit of space and nobody knows we're there, nobody knows your name, whatever, then are we really having church? Are we really fulfilling something? Or is it really when we encourage each other, not only in the word and encouraging each other in love, but encouraging each other to give, to be involved with the least mm. of these? Yeah, and one, uh, yeah, I've got, Plenty of uh, great experiences with, like, where I worked in Denmark, uh, people from the streets, a lot of uh, people with uh, alcohol problems, uh, all kind of abuse, and you know, homeless. Uh, we did, uh, uh, once at that time, once every two weeks, we had, like, a dinner party where uh, free food, and we were singing some psalms from the Danish psalm book, and we were... It was a devotional talking about Jesus and his love and his care for us uh, uh, throughout every day. And it was, uh, it was a great uh, group of people. There were dogs and there were people who uh, unfortunately couldn't hold down the food because uh, they have been drinking too much uh, yeah, mm. a few weeks before, just constantly. Uh, but it was the kind of people that uh, probably a lot of churches would not want in their church building because uh, they were loud and they were obnoxious uh, <laughs> and they were maybe complaining. Like I, I would do a devotional and then I'll have people say, no, no, that <laughs> I come or I want to take over. Yeah, that reminds me of, uh, and then something completely different. Uh, it, it was great. To me, that was definitely church. Yeah. And then uh, we had the, the, the fellowship. Uh, uh, in some sense, uh, a breaking of bread that uh, we shared a meal together, That's so and, uh, and something I, I've noticed uh, in the Bible when Jesus was uh, really socializing with people, uh, community, it was uh, sharing a meal, um, mm. and uh, most often someone's uh, house, if they had a building, if there was a house, or else it would be around a campfire, but sharing that meal, and I think that's, uh, if that can be become a habit, again, that when we get together, it, it's it's cool getting together at coffee shops and stuff. But I like to see more of the just getting together like around to the mirror. Yeah. <laughs> well, join the I Baptist church because they they know how to do a covered dish. You know. Well, <laughs> let's talk potluck. A covered or, dish and potluck. Sanctuary is called a random blessing. Hey, I'm telling you, a covered dish and casserole. Random and always a blessing. Best meals ever is at a funeral in the Baptist church. We don't church. believe in pot or luck. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Well, no, them's not church work. Can I, church. can I say something? That, yes. um, you know, isn't isn't it kind of the point uh, as far as giftings and positions in the church? Isn't it really meant that we're supposed to learn from each other on that? Uh, it's not. It's not that we are only supposed to work within this this uh, uh, vicinity of, of your giftings or your position, but it is to learn from each other. I, I uh, mm. you know, Jay back Good there. Point. He, he, he. Uh, He's a servant, and that's what I want to learn more about. That's I know that I have to. When I listen to Chris's, you know, it, it puts this fire in me to learn and to get back into the Scripture. And to now, why reflect. is it? Because he's in love with it. 
because you can see his passion right and his passion catches on that's that's what you're saying isn't yeah, it? I, we all need each other to learn from each other yes and that's yeah. not it, it's not like we're we're they're the experts we we lack in so much crap it's crazy but well, when you're in love with scripture agree. the way Chris is, yeah, it makes me want to fall in love with scripture mm -hmm. the way yeah. he is. Yes. A, a friend of mine at work told me that that he says, you know, I like your podcast and everything, but you got this new guy there that's got this long, white, scraggly hair. He said that guy can't be crazy. <laughs> <laughs> he said that guy when he just says the word God, yeah, when he just says the word God, absolutely. He said I want to pause it, back up, and listen to it again. Well, See, I see, love that. That's all. Yeah. You know, I think that there's a an organ an, an organic intention to the to the church through the Spirit of God. To, you know, not to be like cosmic, but but sincerely, yeah. because the um, positions within the church, you know, the callings and the gifts of the Spirit. Even the Bible says that all of those are for the benefit of the entire yes. body. Yes. And Great. so, if we didn't take everything and okay, you know, I'm this, and this is all that I am, right. and, and I got to do, you know, the best I can with my little thing here, or I have this gift, or I have that gift, but instead realize that I'm in this position for one reason, and that is to bless everyone around mm -hmm. me, and so whatever I operate in today is what I operate in today, because it's not about labels, mm -hmm. it's about benefiting the entire body of yes. Christ. Mm -hmm. Yes. And if you want to learn about particular subject or something or a passion or something like the obviously the best way to learn about it is to get around people who are really passionate about it but just let that rub off just spend time with them if i want to learn about i don't know dream interpretation yes. spend time with someone who's really good at it, ask some questions and just let that rub off now talk about passion for a minute how important is that in your life dude <sighs> The love it's, bound guy. It's really <laughs> the love bound guy. Well, Maybe I shouldn't really ask important. that uh, yeah. in that way. I mean, <laughs> Doctor Love. I, I mean, the kind of passion <laughs> that. Doctor Love. <laughs> well, what passion are we talking about? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> How important is it? And and I'll have you answer this, but all of you jump in here. How important is it that you operate in your gifting where you have passion? Because I see a whole lot of people in ministry that don't seem to have any passion in what they're doing. Yeah, maybe they're just not doing the right thing. Or they have yet to discover what their passions are. And mm -hmm. we're, all, we're all discovering. I'm, I'm constantly discovering new stuff. And but I noticed I, for I, you, Christian, yeah. when I can hit on things you're passionate about, one of the reasons that I asked Christian to do his podcast uh, is because he really likes girls. No, I, seriously, no, 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 I love women. He does. <laughs> I am not ashamed of that. No, but honestly, <laughs> neither should I. I kind of felt like Chris <laughs> Christian has really good insight into uh, relationships. Um, he understands women a little better than I do, which really? is not should, a lot. When you just say the word women, <laughs> just say the word women. I want to pause it, back it up. Listen, just say the word women, <laughs> women. <laughs> and then you do the little, the little thing, you know. Did everybody just get goosebumps or what? <laughs> Actually, it's I think it's more like this. <laughs> <laughs> but, but anyway, we'll, yeah. But but passion, and you know, a lot of times we we say, "Okay, I'm supposed to do this," and you wake up in the morning and you have you have promised yourself you're going to go through the Bible in two years, and you've divided it up by chapters, and and so you force yourself to read first thing, yeah. and you force yourself to pray. <clears throat> you remember you set your alarm so you remember to pray a few times during the day. And you force yourself, force yourself, force yourself. And pretty soon you start burning out in your faith because you yeah. need it. Yeah. Now another person gets up in the morning and says, man, I can't wait to read. Yeah. They fall on their knees. I can't wait to pray. Man, it's been an hour already. It seems like five minutes. All the day long, they're praying more and more. And all the day long, God continues to work on their heart. And what is the difference between this person and this person? Passion. Yeah. I mean, there's, like, someone can be passionate about, let's say, the Bible, and but they read it completely differently, and the way they go about it, they're, if you want to use the word discipline or whatever, it, it looks very, very different. Um, and that's fine. We all need to kind of find our ways of how it motivates us. You know, some person, I find, for me, I think, I, I like, 
I'm pretty structured, so for me it really helps to do something um, at certain times, like to have kind of a little bit of a schedule with it. You know, I've gotten less rigid <laughs> with that over the years, but um, it's also when you start doing something, even though you might not necessarily be super into it in the beginning, that it, you become passionate about it too. Like and the you more find, you, you do find it, your passion. you find yeah. yeah you, the mm -hmm. more you do it, you know, the more you get into it, the more you. The more sure. you want to learn about it, so it's sometimes we need that a little bit of yeah, just push and just kind of just kind of doing it out of yeah. I'm just I'm just going to get into this, and, and the passion will come. I think the the cool thing about passion is that that it uh, you can you can put a lot of hours and energy into something. If you got the passion, then yeah. uh, you you, you get energy from it. You, you can do a, exactly. a hard job and get energy. Like seeing um, you on stage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, I mean, you, I got some. <laughs> you on stage, you explode He's on a stage. Man, it's yeah. dangerous. <laughs> yeah. And and afterwards, I'm completely spent, and I've got so much energy. It just fills me up. Yeah. yeah. So sure. if, if we can have that passion for for the love of Christ, that it'll just overflow without us having to put work into it. Right. Of course, we have to, but uh, but it can, yeah. It becomes the, a labor uh, give, of love. Giving can be a. Uh, you can get energy from giving. Yeah. yeah. I think Craig, everybody yeah. talk a little bit more about um, about giftings because this kind of gets back into that area, doesn't it? You know, if I'm if I'm trying to operate in a, in a particular gift that I actually don't have, that's a little difficult. I'm not going to necessarily find a passion there, am I? Yeah, I mean, I think that there's you, you know you have gifts of the spirit, and those gifts of the spirit, or or even talents and abilities that God gives. You know, we operate in those and we function in those. And I think that we have to do, again, I, not to institutionalize it, but to just make it more organic. You know, what you do on your podcast, Chris, is just phenomenal. But a lot of times what we do is we see something like that and we say, okay, I got to emulate that because I really mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we end up being a knockoff that's really not that good. And it gets to be this burden and this drudgery. And so I think we have to find out, well, what is it that I do? What is what is it that I'm good at? What naturally flows from me, mm. you know? And that takes time, you know? It, it may take years to figure it out. I mean, again, you know, God is not, he can't be contained. So you may spend 20 years in ministry to get to this point and say, okay, you know, was it a waste or was it was it training? You know, was it what I needed to do to get to here? So, Craig, you are um, you are making some transitions right now. Yeah, you're about to be finished preaching. Yeah, for right now. For right now. Do you feel like something dies when that happens? Is there a passion in you that you feel like you're not going to be able to continue to use as a preacher? I mean, in other words, when you stand in front of people and you're preaching, you feel like you're using your gifts. What happens when you're not? Well, I think that, again, because I'm identifying with my gift, you know, I'm translating myself through what I can do. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing necessarily, but it, it can be a negative thing because you think, okay, well, this is who I am. That's really, it's not who we are. I mean, we are, our identity is wrapped up in who Christ is. So, yeah, originally whenever I talked about making this transition, stepping back from being a pastor and, and whatever it is that I'm going to do next, you know, um, there was this sense of loss because I do love to preach. I, you know, I feel like I'm good at it. And, and when I'm doing you it, I feel energized. Yeah. yeah. But um, I think we have to be careful, again, not to translate ourselves through something that we've done. Yeah. Which I That's totally good. am doing that. I'm not over this yet. I'm still in the middle of it. But I, I do think that we have to say, okay, I can't translate through my... You know, we, we all the time say, well, I don't want to identify myself by the ways that I've failed. Mm. I think it's that is hard to do. But you also have to make sure you don't identify yourself through your successes, too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Chris, would you agree with that? Yeah. Um, well, of course. Of course I agree with that. But I'm, I'm going to say, though... You know, as someone who, you know, you've been in the pulpit for a really long time, and um, I've been out of the pulpit for a very long time, and i got to tell you, I miss it. I miss it every day. You know, I, I really felt a very strong calling to do it, a 
passion to do it. I was I had so much energy to do it, you know, and and it was I felt effective in doing it. I felt like I was of use to the kingdom in doing so. I felt like I, I really felt like th this. Okay, God has put us here for a purpose, right? When you're saved, you know He doesn't just translate us to heaven, right? We're here for a purpose, and yeah. and when you find what that purpose is, and you're convinced that your purpose is to preach the gospel, and then it's for whatever reason it's taken from you, or you're not doing it anymore. I mean, whatever that whatever that passion is. I mean. It's been many years for me, and I still miss it. I still mourn that loss. I do, I do, and and you know, I do. I want it's to funny talk more just... about this area of passion <clears throat> as we continue. You know, all of you have passions that maybe some of you have a passion that you're not even realizing that you uh, you feel something deep in your heart, and you just can't quite seem to find an avenue for it. It's a it's a difficulty. And I want to talk about this more next time. You know, how important is passion, those passions that God gives us? How do we recognize them? How do we use them? We've got these examples. We're going to jump into these examples and more around the table uh, the next time we talk. So don't miss it. God bless you.